And uh, I can now introduce uh, my colleague, Abbas Denham, uh, with whom uh, we work uh, together in uh, many projects. Uh, Abbas is a reader in uh, cardiometabolic epidemiology. He came to Imperial um, in 2016 from Erasmus University. And he has a long track expertise in genetic epidemiology. He's um, in the steering committee of the cohorts for heart and aging research in uh, genomic epidemiology, the charts consortium, and has been involved in many and led many GWAS uh, studies. He is now working on the genetics uh, of various omic uh, technologies like metabolomics and uh, proteomics, and in applying medulla randomization and other molecular epidemiology tools uh, to investigate causality of uh, complex stress and diseases, including cardiometabolic disease and dementia, for which he's going to talk to us today. Abbas, over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for the introduction. Uh, so, um, well, my, my talk is, is about discovering novel causal genes for Alzheimer and cardiovascular disease, but I want to go to start a bit more general to say how we ha have been looking at the links between cardiovascular disease and Alzheimer, and, and uh, eventually I will reach to, to a project where we are focusing on, on identifying novel genes. So we know that cardiovascular disease and Alzheimer happen together and there are different ideas why these two are happening. Is it because of shared risk factors? Are there common pathways? And there's several uh, mechanisms or pathways that we're thinking, and this uh, figure is trying to bring, uh, to list them here. Uh, and any of these could be one of the underlying pathways. And one of the first ones that you know, uh, comes to mind is of course, uh, role of atherosclerosis. Is atherosclerosis a common uh, mechanism or pathway for both uh, Alzheimer's disease and cardiovascular disease. And in order to address that, uh, we needed uh, a good measure of atherosclerosis, which um, CIMT, which is carotid media uh, thickness, uh, is a measure of atherosclerosis that is predicting the risk of cardiovascular disease and can be measured non-invasively so it's a very good uh, index for, for atherosclerosis. And we tried to do it GWAS on CIMT. And uh, we, we, we collected data from a number of studies, including you know, studies in CHARGE and, and UCLIP. But as you can see in the figure, the main uh, contributor here was the UK Biobank, uh, where we had the data on more than 40,000 individuals. And this enabled us to run a GWAS on, on CIMT uh, on more than 130,000 individuals. Now, how we're going to use this to, to look at the association or the link between cardiovascular disease or atherosclerosis and Alzheimer, we're using a method called Mendelian randomization. Some of you might be familiar with this. We make benefit of the random inheritance of the genetic variants, and it's actually uh, trying to mimic a Kilnkart trial. In a trial, you have two arms uh, of medication and control, where in medication group, uh, you change the level of a certain uh, marker. And in Mendelian randomization, the randomization is done uh, by, by nature, actually. People are either receive, uh, receiving uh, of, of a genotype that changes the level of, for instance, LDL here. And then you compare the incidence of disease, cardiovascular disease, for instance, between the two arms or between the two group of the uh, allele carriers. So we did this and we tried to, to check whether uh, CIMT is causal to Alzheimer's disease. And as you can see, despite the good power we had with CIMT, uh, the results for Alzheimer's disease was negative. So one of these is showing inverse variance weighted, which is the main method and the two others are, are, are robust methods. Uh, weighted median and agar, and none of them were significant. So what we, we learned from this is that it's, this, this Mendelian randomization is not supporting a causal relation between atherosclerosis and Alzheimer. This next question was, now that we know all these genes for, for CIMT, is there any overlap with genes that we know for Alzheimer's disease? So this Venn diagram shows the these common genes between CIMT and different traits and diseases. Uh, we have a very good coverage with, with blood pressure, with carotid plaque, and with, with CAD. But the only gene that was common between CIMT, CAD, and, and AD was APOE, which is the most well-known gene uh, to link 
to as a pleiotropic gene for for Alzheimer and cardiovascular uh, disease. Now, the question is, is it APOE that is behind both diseases? Um, the, the main question was whether APOE has a common pathway that is linking or driving both of these diseases. And in order to address this, uh, we used, uh, we used uh, metabolomics data and, uh, and co-localization method which basically co-localization is a method where we check the genetic association in a, in a genetic region. And uh, the idea is to find whether that genetic region is, is causal or is associated with, with more than one trait, with two traits, for instance. And we are interested to know if there is one single SNP that can drive, uh, the, can explain the, the co-localization in that region. So we use the metabolomics data in UK Biobank. Uh, uh, th this is the Nightingale platform. And what we have here on the left-hand side, I have the top SNPs from GVAS and Alzheimer's disease, coronary artery disease, and CIMT, and, and diseases. And we, we did um, uh, basically co-localization on each of the metabolites with these diseases. And we are presenting the results as, as this graph showing potential mediatory role of these metabolites in linking each of these SNPs with the disease. And as you can see, there are two kind of clusters uh, for CIMT and CAD. These are the metabolites that are linking basically the effect of CAD top GVAS SNP or CIMT top GVAS SNPs with their diseases. But there is not much link between, I mean, there are not many common metabolites between these two. So despite the fact that APOE is a common uh, uh, region for uh, uh, epileotropic gene for CAD and Alzheimer, at least with this metabolomic platform with Nightingale, we were not able to find any, any, any common metabolite that may refer to a common pathway for these two. <laughs> now, the question is, are there further genetic mutations that are driving this? And for this, we needed to, uh, to provide more, more statistical power. And for this, we are using a method, uh, multivariate analysis or uh, multivariate trait analysis of GVAS or MTAC, where basically the results of GVAS for, for different traits are, are meta-analyzed together, considering the genetic correlation between them, correcting for that. And, and basically, if the two traits are are related and there is a pilotropic region, the, the signal in that region will be boosted by, by the information and data from, from the other traits. So for instance, here I have an example, <coughs> sorry, of uh, the MTAG analysis we have done on Alzheimer's disease and, and uh, atrial fibrillation. The, uh, the orange uh, dots are showing the association in univariate analysis on Alzheimer. And the blue ones are after we have done MTAC with uh, atrial fibrillation. So uh, we did this analysis uh, on, on Alzheimer's disease and different cardiovascular traits with, with uh, atrial fibrillation, with stroke, with coronary artery disease, with CIMT, with diastolic and systolic blood pressure, and, and this graph uh, is, is showing the results. It's a bit uh, complex, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you what, what it says. So these are the chromosomes where we had uh, basically uh, common uh, regions associated with Alzheimer's disease and at least one of the CV traits, cardiovascular traits. And as you can see, for instance, here, this gene is both significant after MTAG analysis with Alzheimer's disease and with atrial fibrillation. Uh, the same, this one is with the stroke, et cetera, et cetera. So we have uh, 63 regions of which 28 uh, regions were also, we found evidence for co-localization. Out of these 28, for three of them, we found uh, at least a single SNP that could explain the co-localization. And these are the three uh, regions. So these are basically pilotropic SNPs in three regions for Alzheimer's disease, and two of them with, was with AF, and the other was CAD, which is basically the APOE gene, which we already know. 
the evidence for plaque was very interesting. Uh, we, we did further uh, work on, on this and we were able to, to show, well, here in this graph, you can see the co-localization between Alzheimer's disease and, and atrial fibrillation. We also looked at the co-localization with, with expression of plaque in different tissues. And for instance, we were able to, uh, to show that there's co-localization co of this signal with expression of the gene in, in uh, left ventricular uh, tissue expression of the data. And, and we were able to show in, in an experiment that uh, a differentially gene expression for plaque, uh, we showed upregulation of the gene in astrocytes uh, in, in AD cases versus controls and upregulated in, in greater amyloid beta uh, in astrocytes, uh, again, both significant after FDR correction. So basically we found a number of polytropic genes here. So, so there are some polytropic genes that we might be able to find. But another pathway that we're still working on and we would like to, to further study is inflammation. And we started looking at this in a, in a slightly different way. So one of the reasons that we know uh, inflammation is causal to Alzheimer's disease is the link with autoimmune diseases or inflammatory diseases. So here in this table, on the left-hand side, we have looked at the association between uh, autoimmune diseases and, uh, and, uh, and Alzheimer's disease. And as you can see, we find a very significant association. Even when we adjust for any potential confounders here, the, the associations are still significant. So in observational data, it seems that uh, any inflammatory disease or autoimmune disease is associated with a high risk of Alzheimer. Is this causal? Well, using UK Biobank data, of course, uh, we did Mendelian randomization. And as you can see here on the right-hand side, except for, for rheumatoid arthritis, which was also driven by one uh, locus, none of them were causal. So, so using uh, basically this data, we were able to show that the associations observed in CPRD are, are likely to be confounded. Now, what, what is the confounder here? Why, why, do, why is there a, 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 a significant association in the observational data? It, we, we think that, we thought that maybe there are some inflammatory cytokines that are driving both of these, these two diseases. And in order to, to address this, uh, we, we collected data on a number of inflammatory cytokines uh, using data from three Finnish studies and we did Mendelian randomization. Um, we were able to find, for instance, IP10 as a potential um, cytokine to affect both uh, a number of inflammatory diseases and nominally significant with Alzheimer's disease, but the power is very small here. We know that, uh, for instance, some of these cytokines are in a very small sample size, just a few thousand. And in order to, to have enough power to, to address this. We're now looking into the OLINK data in, in Biobank and that's, that's what we're doing. With 50,000 data in, in Biobank, we have enough power and that's analysis that we're doing uh, now. So this work, uh, of course, is, uh, is uh, done by, by many students and, and colleagues that uh, work together with, with our group. I'm the, the lucky one to present this here. In particular, I would like to thank the students, uh, uh, Dev, uh, Foti, Depender, Gian, uh, Ville, and, and Bowen, who have done the analysis. Uh, back to you, Gian. Thank you, Abbas. I just want to turn to Abbas um, to answer a, a really big question um, <laughs> that um, uh, one of the uh, attendees has asked. What do you think, Abbas, is the most significant barrier or bottleneck to using UK Biobank data for dementia research? Okay. Uh, well, I think uh, I, I don't see a major bottleneck. I think uh, here today we had very examples of you know how this resource could be used. Uh, but one thing that I can say is that uh, the number of cases uh, for Alzheimer and dementia is still growing. So I think that in future, when, when these numbers will be higher, we will have more power. There are, there are 
certain research questions that we would like to look into uh, UK Biobank. And despite the fact that it's half a million, the number of cases uh, is, is now just a few thousand. And I'm sure that in future it will be even more. And, you know, we have, we ha we have a relatively young population and by aging, we see more, uh, uh, more, more cases and more statistical power. Great, fantastic, Abbas, thanks.